Congressman Tim Burchett is in Accidental Truth saying some really cool stuff. But there's an inter- the interview with him was over an hour, and I went to his office and I set up multiple cameras. Something that nobody's seen yet because I haven't put it out is me sitting in his office for the first part of the interview, lining him out on everything we know from the Roswell incident all the way up until now. <laughs> I'm sitting in a sitting congressperson's office with multiple cameras telling him the whole UFO story. that Nobody's ever done that. And, and so that's going to be one of the behind the scenes things that people can access. What, co- what was his involvement again? Like what committee is he on? You know, what happened with Tim? He's, uh, um, he's always been kind of into the topic. You know, there's a lot of people in government. We think that we have some kind of separation from them, but they're people just like yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and he's always been interested. He's in that. not that high as a congressman. He, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. And he's a house, <laughs> he's a representative, which yeah. is, you know, he'll tell you in his office is like, yeah, I'm low man on a totem pole. Right. Here. But, um, He's a really good guy, down to earth. Um, he's like a big God guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's he's, he's very religious. Yeah, he. You know, he. One of the talks that we had, the, my conversation with Tim Burchett, was that that you know he's one of those Christian fundamentalists who does not believe that the idea of life in outer space and even aliens visiting the Earth interferes with their belief system. A lot of them do believe that and will staunchly deny it for that sake. But Tim's pretty open minded about that. But what happened is one day he was just crossing the street and he got hit up by TMZ and it was the, the, the UFO things were big uh, in the news. And Tim made a comment like, yeah, it's just a big cover up. More people believe in aliens than believe in Congress. And he walked <laughs> off <laughs> and all of a sudden that was it for Tim. He was now the UFO Congress guy. Uh, and so if you go to his website, you could buy the t-shirt. You know, <laughs> it's pretty funny. But um, that's how that, it was totally just happen chance. Wow. The happenstance that he got uh, kind of thrust into the mainstream talking about this stuff. But he understands. And, uh, and I've talked to, three months ago, I had lunch with Andre Carson, the senator, the, the yes. representative that ran that hearing. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. How'd by, you get hooked up with him? Well, I, I work with MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. We're the oldest and largest organization studying the topic. We have lobbyists in Washington, D.C. Yeah, What a lot of people don't know is that we've been behind the scenes in D.C., including some work by Dave McDonald, the the director, Jessica Taco, who owns the uh, lobbying firm A10 and Associates that work for us. We've been in D.C. for about two years now, softening everybody up over this disclosure thing. And while there's a lot of people out there talking about it, like, oh, yes, I've been in Washington, D.C. doing this, this, and this, we've been there, and and we have the proof of it. The hearing that they did with Andre Carson and Mike Gillibrand, or I'm sorry, Mike Gallagher, we were instrumental in getting those hearings done. We're the ones who talked Andre Carson into having those hearings in the first place. That was us. And so the reason I was having lunch with Andre Carson is because I was introduced to him by the lobbying firm and a bunch of people from MUFON went up to DC and we met with a lot of sitting congressmen. And so I actually sat down with Andre, sat right next to him for over an hour and I laid it out for him too. And I told him about the movie because he's in the movie and he's basically portrayed as one of those people who's towing the line for yes. the new story. Yes. And so I kind of had to break that to him. I'm like, well, you know, you're in the film and 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 we're pointing out that you're supporting the new <laughs> You're not <narrative>. great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, he went home and watched it and um and there was there's really been no blowback from anybody in the film even though a lot of them uh, are getting kind of caught <laughs> yeah, saying yeah, stuff yeah. that they shouldn't say. What did he um, say, you know, without revealing confidences or things like that off the record stuff? Like what was your what was your take sitting with him for an hour and, and hearing him talk about the subject matter? Did it feel like Gubnit Man or did it feel like No, you he's know, actually I, I don't even have to have a take because the conversations are that frank. Um most of these guys understand guys and girls got to count Kirsten Gillibrand, the work that she's doing. They, they have an official stance that they have to take, but they, they know and will freely admit that they know they're being lied to. They know the government is even the front facing people at the Pentagon. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, but they know it and they're mad about it. They, they feel the same way about the situation that we feel about it. Now that, complexities that are involved like if you're on the senate intelligence committee and you're after the hearing you're back in behind those closed doors and then you come out of that meeting it just suddenly becomes intensely complex you can be like sitting 
like like I was sitting with Andre Carson, like me and you are sitting right now. And and he's like, yeah, it's all it's all smoke and mirrors. There's things I mm. cannot tell you, uh, b- but we're all being lied to by the government body politic. The story that we're hearing is not the story. You know it. I know it. The people know it. And they know that we know that they know that we know it. Doesn't matter. How much of it is just government, though? And, and actually, that's a very bad way of asking the question. I need to elaborate on that so you can understand what i'm getting at here yeah because the whole conversation so far has been about how it's not just government. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> but like when we think of government sometimes we put it in like separate boxes i mean so we have like government like congress senate executive branch and then we have government like agencies and things right. like that and and it, this conversation has been like there's a mix of a ton of this and then there's people who are coming forward who now aren't in the government allegedly mm-hmm. i get all that but i'm saying at the core of it, even all the way back in the beginning of this history, which we can talk about how it's very interesting that this kind of started right after World War II, like a lot of the stuff. Right. But it's not all of it. There's, there's been reports throughout human history, but the heaviness of it really started after that. When you're dealing with these people who are guarding these secrets from the Andre Carsons of the world, from the Kristen Gillibrands of the world, the elected high-ranking people in supposedly in our government – I start to then think about, like, for example, some of the other people you covered in your documentary, like a Robert Bigelow, mm-hmm. who is a, and air quotes right here for people not listening, a private citizen. Right. And I start to wonder if any of these people, and this is where the tinfoil hat goes on, are any of these people we see who are private citizens all the way to, forget ufology for a second, all the way to funding political campaigns and things like that, are they really private citizens or are they a part of a game and it's just not written down on a central database somewhere? There's probably something to that, but you know what really what it really is is that you can't say the government because there's too many aspects to it. Mm. Now you have your front facing guys like the elected officials that are brought into Congress. Yeah. They you know, and they have to respect certain privacies, obviously. They take oaths and if they're given confidential information, it's just like anybody else that has classified information. You can't reveal it. And there is this is an honor bound system and, and we should be very thankful that we have people that that respect those oaths and those duties. So I used to be very militantly angry. When I started this doc, I was like that. I was like, how dare you keep this? Mm. This this affects humanity. This affects my ability to live my life. You know something like like Lou and I sitting, just like you and I are sitting. And in the back of my mind during that whole interview, I'm like, dude, you have the keys to the kingdom and you're not going to tell me. And we're supposed to be okay with that. And, and back then I was like, I'm not okay with that. But over time and really understanding this, I'm a little more okay with it. I still think it sucks. I still think that if you have information that could vitally change the course of humanity, uh, you need to take a really hard look at why you're keeping that from the planet. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.